Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket coming at you today with my Phoenix Arms HP-22. This is a single action firearm made out of zinc alloy. They call it Zamac or Zamac. I'm not exactly how to pronounce that. It is made by Phoenix. Phoenix was founded in 1992 by the ex-wife of the owner of the Raven Company. And Raven's factory had burned down in 1991 and Phoenix was the company that was founded shortly thereafter it. The single single action firearm fires from a 10 round detachable box magazine. The overall specs on this gun, uh, it comes in at a 5.62 inches in length. The overall height is 4.1 inches. The barrel is 3 inches. The width is 1 inch. And the weight comes in at 20.5 ounces. They come in black. They come in stainless. They actually have a target package that comes with everything that you see here with an additional 5 inch barrel and an additional magazine with a pinky extension on it. It has two safeties. It has a hammer block safety right up here, which prevents the striker from being able to uh, interface with a round. It also comes with the sear slash side slide safety that you see right here. They Both of these safeties were put in to make it as California compliant as possible, which makes it a kind of a, a Rubik's Cube of a firearm to use. So when you want to use this firearm... You need to drop the mag, but you can't you uh, can't do that without the safety on. So the first thing you do is you put the safety on, you drop the magazine, you load up your magazine. Now you put your magazine in your gun, but the safety's on and the slide won't go back. So then you have to put down the safety, and then at that point you can rack the slide. I will tell you that because this is a uh, fixed barrel direct blowback gun, a lot of the force that is used to keep the slide in, in battery until the bullet leaves the chamber or leaves the actual barrel of the gun is in the hammer. So a lot of people have found these a little hard to rack the slide with the hammer uh, forward. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but a lot of people will go ahead and they will cock that hammer before they rack the slide. I, I, I've been wanting to get one of these. I've done a video on the HP 25. Uh, I actually did a range review with it and the Taurus PT 25. I have with a range review, I have uh, links to those. I will go ahead and put them up in the, this video as well. I took this to the range with the Goat Whisperer and with Tanfolio. I had cleaned it right beforehand. I started shooting Federal Auto Match and had some pretty good success at the beginning. As it started to get a little dirtier, I started to have some more problems with reliability, a lot of stove piping. At that point, Tanfolio gave me some of his uh, CCI mini mags, and it ran a lot better. So then I started running some just CCI standard velocity, and while I still had some stove piping, it ran a lot better. What I would tell you, if you're going to get one of these and you want a good plinking gun, spend a little extra money and get the little better ammo. I really like CCI. I think it, it runs through everything that I want, really with the kind of reliability that I like to see. So spend a little extra money on it. Other things that I will tell you, uh, 22 is not going to be as reliable in a pistol, semi-automatic setup quite like this. I ran the HP 25 and 25 ACP, and it ran a lot more reliably. I know 25 ACP is a lot more expensive, but for me, I just thought it was a lot better. If you're going to run this and it's just really for a plinking toy, you know, I found that the way that the slide operates, a lot of the stove piping, I could just pull the stove pipe off and still have fun with it. I will tell you that the trigger reset on this was non-existent. I really couldn't feel it. I couldn't hear it, which caused me to have some flinching trying to prepare for that next round. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Also, I will tell you, if you're thinking about using this for self-protection, with all the safeties and, and the manual of arms that it takes, it's going to require a lot of training. So if you have another firearm, you know, I would tell you, you're just going to need to take this to the range a lot to get really used to it. And at that point, I think then, then it could be all right. But if you're just going to have it for a range toy, I think you're really going to enjoy it. The price point works out really, really well. 
As far as the HP 22 versus the HP 22A, you will see that the HP 22 did not have a sing uh, did not have a half cock where uh, the HP 22A does have a half cock. This gun that I have is an HP 22. The again, I, I'm not a I'm not hurt by the fact that it does not have a half cock. So if you see it, that's going to be your main difference. When you want to go ahead and get this gun clean, you're going to go ahead and make sure that the gun is clear. You're going to need the magazine in the gun. You're going to take these two tabs and you're going to push forward on those two tabs. And it's kind of, kind of tricky. And then you can go ahead at that point and pull the barrel off. You want to make sure that the spring does not fling, fling off. These springs can come out and that can be kind of difficult. Uh, I've had it spring across for me from time to time. When you want to re at this point, you could go ahead and take the barrel off, clean it all up. You can see that I have not cleaned it since I took it to the range. When you get it clean, oiled up like you want to, you're going to want to make sure that you have the magazine in the gun. You're going to catch the front of this spring on this front ledge of your slide, and then you're going to push it back onto the gun and pull it back while retaining the spring. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. It's kind of hard to do all three of these at once. So you're going to want to go ahead and catch the spring on the edge of the slide. At that point, you're going to want to grab it with these two fingers and then hold the spring into place with your finger and then you just kind of move it back. And of course, you wanna go ahead and make sure that you have it on its rails like that. You're gonna hold that into place and then just move back slowly. I've seen some people hold a pencil into place, which works really well as well. And then you can go ahead and put the slide stop on. You can see that the spring is caught right there. You will go ahead and catch this little hook on that little pin down there and lock it into place. So I'll do it right here, see if I can get it on the camera just like that, and then it will lock into place. At that point, you can drop the safety and check for how it is functioned, seeing if it's functioning correctly, and you're ready to go. I want to thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. All the likes, the subscriptions, the comments are really appreciated. All the shares as well. And as always, you stay classy, YouTube. I learned a lesson. Never half-ass two things. Whole-ass one thing. <laughs>